Hello and welcome. In this video, we'll provide an overview of tensors, variables, and placeholders. A tensor is a special type of mathematical object that was originally used to analyze the way that materials stretch under tension. Nowadays, a tensor typically refers to a multidimensional array. To fully understand multidimensional arrays, we'll need to understand the concept of dimension, which, if you're familiar, is an important topic in physics. The zero dimension is simply a point, or a single object. The first dimension is a line, which can contain an infinite number of point elements. A one-dimensional array only requires one coordinate to locate an element. The second dimension can be seen as a flat surface, which can contain an infinite number of lines. To locate an element in a two-dimensional array, you need to specify two coordinates. The third dimension can be seen as a volume, which can contain an infinite number of surfaces, and the fourth dimension goes beyond what we can easily visualize, but you can think of it as space-time, or a volume that changes through time, something like that. The main idea is that the dimension specifies the number of coordinates you'd need to locate a specific point. You can look here to see the mathematical objects, and this table should help to reinforce the concept. So let's define these arrays using TensorFlow. If you want to experiment with these data structures, you should apply a few functions and observe the behavior based on the different structure types. The tensor structure gives us the freedom to shape the data set the way we want it. It's particularly helpful when dealing with images, since images have to encode a lot of information. Images have a width and a height, so it should be easy to see that we'd need at least a two-dimensional structure. But remember, the pixels of an image are broken down into three color channels, typically red, green, and blue, or RGB. So an image essentially needs three different matrices to store the intensity of each color channel. That might look something like this. As you can see, an image requires a third dimension for color in order to represent all the information. So we can combine these three matrices together to form a tensor. Now that we're more familiar with the structure of the data, we can take a look at how TensorFlow handles variables. To define variables, we simply use the command tf.variable. Variables need to be initialized before a graph can be run in a session, which can be done using tf.initialize underscore all underscore variables. To update the value of a variable, we define an update function using tf.assign. We can then run the operation. Let's first create a simple counter. When the graph is launched, we'll need to add an initialization operation for the variables. We can then start the session and run the graph. After the variables are initialized, we print the initial value of the state variable, we run the update operation, and then we print the result after each update. If you want to feed data to TensorFlow from outside a model, you will need to use placeholders. You can think of a placeholder like a variable that won't actually receive its data until a later point. To create one, you can use the placeholder method. You'll need to specify the data type, as well as the data type's precision in terms of the number of bits. Here you can see each data type with the respective Python syntax. So now let's create a placeholder, and then we'll define a simple multiplication operation. Now we need to define and run the session. But remember, the placeholder still doesn't hold a value, so if we run as is, we'd get an error. We can solve this by passing an extra argument when we call the session. We'll use the argument feed underscore dict, a dictionary that contains each placeholder name followed by its respective data. We can pass any kind of tensor through the placeholders to get the answer to the multiplication operation. By now, you should understand the purpose of tensors, variables, and placeholders. Thank you for watching this video. To practice and learn more, go to the lab and run the code for yourself.